timeline you mo most people have them like years a month but when you're working with resources i would advise to get it on weeks and days and after that we need to assign a resource to that activity so from here from the resources we just say add resources i need to remove filters just to show the resources and i've added i will add this label resource or resource one that i have as a label resource um another thing we'll do just to make it easy to look at the calculation we'll just make this 20 days and the budgeted units 1000 just to make things a bit easier and then i'll reschedule the activities and go to my resource histogram and what you can see here is the resources they have an equal amount for every day which is like 50 uh, units per day and these 50 units are basically the 1000 divided by the 20 days of duration that we have okay so that's quite simple quite easy to understand however there is another thing which add complexity so first we have that resource curve and if we open the resource curve and we say show me or make this resource uh, distributed in a bell shape and I've done that and after hitting refresh go to the resource curves and looking at it and it is completely different so every day we have a different value or not every day we have different values in different durations and different periods and today's session is we need to understand how this distribution is calculated in Primavera in order to be able to calculate it in in python or or, or a power bi or any other programming language uh, so in order to do that we just open the resource curves and go to the bell shape and hit modify and here we'll show you the distribution what is the requirement for every period so basically here we have what it say that when zero percent of the time elapses, it is zero units or 0% of the units when it's 5% of the time elapsed it's 0.5% of the units will be assigned to that period and 10% will be 0.5 and then 15% will be 1.5 so in order to do this calculation and to check whether that will match our curve generated by p6 or not what we will need to do take this out from here plug it into an excel sheet which I have done so here I just copied that same data from, from this file, uh, from this curve, into this sheet. And we want to do our calculations and see whether it matches or not. So simply, what we have, activity, duration, so let's call it duration, 20 days. And then, okay. Um, yeah, activity duration is 20 and budgeted resources is 1000. So, resource budget is 1000 units. Uh, one thing that I, I like to do most of the time is these values uh, of the distribution are uh, in period. I like to, com to calculate the cumulative, so let's do that here. And this will also give us the, 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 or will show us that it is adding up to 100%. Hopefully, yeah, everything looks okay. And now we have uh, the calculation. So let's now start looking at uh, the activity. And then we have the, I will add here the distribution. So day one, day two, day three, day four, all the way up to day 20. So this will be our. Uh, calculation uh, or the, where we're going to do the calculations but in before we do that uh, any calculations what I want to know is like what is the time elapsed or the percentage of time elapsed which will be equal to the 1 divided by the 20 and uh, that happens to be 5% okay and then we keep doing that for all until we reach to the 100% then in order to get the amount of uh, the amount assigned uh, to each period what we need to do is multiply this value by the budget 
sorry, we need to multiply the budget here and make that fixed. We need multiplied by the corresponding value that we have in there. So because this is 5%, I'm going to pick this value. Okay, and then we will do that formula, apply it to all, and let's see how this looks on a curve. Does it look similar or not? Uh, so let's insert a chart yeah and you can definitely see it is similar to what we have in 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 the primavera file okay with the, the peak value is 115 so let's go to primavera and see what is the peak that we have in here and this is 115 so that's exactly matching. Um, another challenge would be what happens if this not 20 because 20 I've selected the number 20 because it matches or corresponds to that 20 periods. But what about if we have this number or this value is 10? Uh, 10 also will be quite easy because basically you're going to. Uh, OK, let's do 10. Um, so what I'm going to do is take out these and then just change this calculation here and make it divided by 10. Or in, if we want to keep that more flexible, we can just divide by the 20 in here and then say that the duration is 10. And here we go. So what we need to do is, yeah, so that's 100. So 10%, it's basically what we need to do is to look at not only the 10% corresponding value, because the 10% corresponding value is 0.5, but we had 0.5 in the 5%, so these two are included within that period. So the, the, the way that I'd like to do it is to calculate that, so I would say that it's 10, so multiply the 100%, the, the 1000 units by the commutative value, not the value, and do the same with the 20%. So instead of having it by, okay, let's, let's drag this formula all the way to the end and then we just adjust it now. Okay, so in, ah, that's, that's a bad choice. I didn't, yeah, need to fix this formula. Yeah, okay. So, what we need to look for is, is the 20% and same thing for 30% and then 40% these are still moving yeah I fixed the wrong the wrong thing so let's change this now And we have the 50 percent sixty and so on and so forth but when we finish this you will find this that the, the curve or the graph that would be generated would match exactly what we have in p6 and there are more into that like special cases when you have something falling in between the values and you basically do that by proportion so you need to calculate what is the proportion between the two values and then put it in between. So you can see now our curve doesn't look anywhere near to the P6 because these are the commutative distribution. So the activity distribution would be the difference between the period and the previous period. And that should be our um, And this should be our distribution. Uh, uh, apologies for that. That should that's this formula is 
not right it should be the 120 minus the sum of all the previous values so that should be the sum of these two and this formula need to be updated and this need to be updated every for everyone in order to show all the previous yeah so that should work and that should match what we have so the, the, the easiest way of checking it is to go through um, to p6 and check the peak and the peak should be the 230 units that we already have and if that happened that means that our calculations is correct but what would be the use of this and uh, in, in, in for me i have seen a lot of people that talking about these curves and whether these curves are important or not in some cases they are but in in the vast majority of the cases it's a nice to have thing but i would say it adds a lot of um overhead to the calculations of any project uh, so for example when if you try to implement that in power bi you'll find that it's the time that it takes to calculate it's way higher than the time that you use in order to do this calculation if you if you have like a straight line and we'll go into power bi and look into that later on so let's check now the peak it's 230 and here we have the peak is 230 so that's how you calculate the resource distribution you can try it with any other graphs or any other curves and let me know how, how you get 